So the other day, I got myself one of these Sweet Revengers. I had four turf uh, nine kilogram uh, springs, plus I cut a uh, one quarter inch um, spring compressor out of stainless steel on this. I got this up to 110 feet per second with worker darts. Pretty impressive. But, okay, this is with worker darts. Okay. Prime, for most people that would be hard, not for me. But, but here. Raise that a little higher. Okay, that hit the target. That's one out of five. Yeah, you can see it. It's just all over the place. Now, I know I'm very biased towards my creation. It's not just because I created it. What you really have to ask yourself is, why did I create it? Okay. Well, it's really simple. Let me demonstrate. Okay, so let's take those same five darts. Those same exact five ones. Let's put in the mouse of fire, which is 10 kilograms, but doesn't have a pre-compression space, of course. So it's about the same amount of prime. It's 2 and prime, but that's the point of this video. First shot hit. Target sideways. Let's see if we can straighten it out. Haha, <laughs> second target hits. Third target hits. <laughs> Four target hits. <laughs> and let's go fifth dart. What does a fifth dart do? And uh, the fifth dart jams on me. Because it's a worker dart. And this is made for ACCs and PACs. But let's get it in there anyway. I fixed the jam anyway. Let's see what it does anyway. <laughs> it's the very top corner of the target. Today's video. When is one hand prime not worth it? And let me explain to you, there's a point where it's not worth it. To treat these concepts properly, it is hard to do. Um, the Sweet Revenge is one of my favorites because it's streamlined, it's, it is one hand prime. Yes, I do have a really high amount of prime there, but as you can see, um, it's very good. You can get lots of aftermarket parts for these, I think mostly what will fit in a hammer shot will fit in a Switch Revenge. I'm going to paint this gold on the outside. Um, they're really good for close range just bam, you know, bam, bam. But can you see where the problem is? That's right. When you have a very heavy amount of prime, that's right, it becomes a little harder to do. Now, you're trying to shoot for the fences. You're trying to shoot for 110 feet per second. That's cool. Usually you'll get about 85, 90 feet per second out of a modded, um, out of, out of a modded, uh, Sweet Revenge or a modded Hammer Shot. I've heard of people doing 100, but, and they make metal parts and all that stuff, but, well, at some point, is it much more worth it if you're trying to aim for the fences to get something that can shoot 150, 170 feet per second? It has this. This is the reason I created this blaster. They were using worker darts for trying them out. Um, put in mind, in this package, this is a brand new dart. This is what I got. Look at look how ugly that is. Oh, gosh, the QC is terrible. So there's all sorts of glue on the side here. And I don't even know what kind of glue it is. Somebody told me it's some hodgepodge of crazy glue and some other stuff they put in there. It's a filler. Lovely, right? Well, okay. You can, people can argue that two hammer shots is, is good. At intimate close range, I would have to agree with you. You know, if you're playing a stock war, you definitely, or a close to stock war, yeah, you know, a modded hammer shot would be pretty good. But when you're playing a, let's say, 150, 200 foot per second war, I played with this on Saturday again, and I did incredibly well. I was up against a person with a chaos. I was up against people with flywheel blasters. I was up against all sorts of firepower. And this did really good um, because it's accurate and then it pretty much goes where you point it. It's also powerful enough to tear apart that target like you saw, you know. 
And I decided to do this review and this comparison with worker darts. Why? Because they're going to be, you know, what's used. Now, put in mind, I modified the Sweet Revenge for Stefan. It did up at about 20 feet per second, I would say. It made it much more of an effective power blaster. It can pretty much hit almost across my backyard. That's pretty good, okay? But look how much power I need to do it. Now, this is where aftermarket parts come into play. Uh, they, they make metal hammers. They make uh, all sorts of stuff with these, okay? That's cool. They make cylinders for them. That's cool. They spin really nice. That's cool. You can holster them really nice. That's cool. But if you're really trying to play a practical war battle, you really need something where um, one hand prime uh, just won't do it. you got to sacrifice a one hand prime for something with a little more power, rate of fire, range, accuracy, okay? And believe it, believe me, those 3D printed you know, eight shot cylinders and stuff, they're not gonna get you your accuracy. These were not made to be accurate. They were made to be back up, up close blasters. And a lot of your wars, I would say maybe 10, 50% of your situations end that way. It does happen. Somebody rushes with a couple of hammer shots and they go, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. It happens, it happens. Me as a two gun shooter, I'm kind of interested in that. But, but for all practical purposes, once you get out of that close range, you really you really need something that can deliver down the line. Another really interesting blaster that I saw years back was extreme close range blaster. We're talking this blaster did at most uh, at most about sixty feet per second at most, but it was semi auto. So every time you pulled the trigger, it fired. But at the lowest setting that could fire the fastest, it only did about 20 feet arched. It was pretty bad. Uh, they were called the Snapfire 8s. And they were dart tag blasters. And they were really, I mean, I got taken out of a round once by Basic Nerf was one of those ones. It was pretty cool. But for all practical shooting outdoors, you know, and, and Nick Wars, unless they're indoors and very intimate, you're going to need the power, you're going to need the range. You're going to need the velocity. And the other problem is I don't like about the hammer shots. Look how variable. Even, even when I loaded Stephens into the blaster, okay? Even when I loaded Stephens, which is more accurate than the full lengths, they were all over the places where this thing hit and hit and hit and hit. Um, you know, a lot of complaints about accurate, uh, blasters being ac inaccurate. Well, start researching stuff like this, guys. Start researching uh, making your long shot a little better. Start... Start researching trying to make your, your retaliator a little better. Seal breach is the way. Um, is, uh, you know, hammer, is, is a hammer shot a worthy sacrifice to a seal breach? No. I honestly believe that way. And, and I know this is going to get a lot of opinions. I understand that. This is going to get a lot of opinions. A lot of people are not going to agree with me. Fine, dude. It's cool. You don't have to agree with me. Um, that's fine. I know I met a guy at, at Stalking Dead who had six hammer shots on him. The two he was holding and four on holsters. Cool, but really, guys, really, here's the thing, okay? Kronos's man, these things, um, the biggest problems they always had was the fact that you had the problem with uh, w with the drum. If you had a heavy yield, it was tough, right? Well, I have to say this: this whole dual gun movement of mine was. Actual dual blaster, excuse me, was inspired by Deadpool. It was, it was. It's no joke, man. It's no joke. I mean, it's like the thing is, is that with a proper setup, and you guys saw it on Stock and Dead. You saw it on the, on the last time. You saw me dual wielding these things. You can do incredible with these. Incredible. Okay. Incredible power, incredible incredible range. I would say these are really good intermediate range blasters. Uh, your, your modded Kronos. You can get them up to about 140, 100 feet per, 150 feet per second with a K26. I got mine up to 160, okay? And that's decent range, okay? As where when you need a little more pinpoint accuracy, I, I found that this was a really good system. You know, last war, I didn't, even, I didn't even use these. I just used this. Um, it was a small. It has. It was a small war, and I decided just to just to break this out. Plus, I wanted to break this in a little more, fine tune a little better. And I was using 
um, ACC version 3. So I know you guys see me brag, and I'm sorry if I'm too much of a boaster. I don't mean to be, I don't mean to berate people, I'm sorry. I'm really a nice guy in person, I am, okay? Um, I've been trying to use more of the, uh, the standard darts. And the reason is, is because I'm trying to do a little more real world comparison. I've got a, um, a review of the prophecy coming up. That's going to have a real world comparison. The stuff I build is much more for my higher end blasters. Much more for Chronomag, Bird of Prey, Big Blue, um, and my Omega, uh, my Omega long shot up there. Yeah. Yeah, that's got an Omega kit on it. It's pretty, it's pretty, with a 14 inch swan barrel, it's pretty, it's pretty far out. Okay, and it shoots pretty far out too. That's more your longer range. So, what I gotta say in conclusion, when is it not worth it um, to go hammer drawn? And I know a lot of guys are gonna get upset. I'm sorry, just bear with me, okay? It's not worth it when you are sacrificing du uh, one handed dual wield for power, or you have another way of dual wielding. You can use dual chronosis, you can use dual strikes. Or when one blaster that can seal breach and you need to aim and fire and shoot um, is more required. I would say with, with, with the ranges a Mauser fire can hit, um, which is, it's not a long range blaster. I would say it's a medium range blaster, kind of like a Kronos, but it's very accurate. You are actually worth not carrying two of these. Yeah, you're worth you're worth carrying one and concentrating your shots. As where with these, you boom with the, against the zombies, boom, boom, boom. I, I I can see that. I can see that. When you want more of a personal um, range of defense and offense, uh, your hammer shots are better. So until next time, this is Chris Cartea. Saying Joshua go changing. Um, I really like these. You know, I got a pair of these coming. Um, I'm decided to make this one the heavier one with the with the spring compression, and the other two I'm going to put 9K turfs in here, in there, and I'm going to probably paint them gold, paint this black, maybe throw some eight shot cylinders in there. I don't know yet, um, but uh, I have two of them coming. I thought it'd be pretty cool. Another thing you can do that's really interesting for the hammer shots is along with the turf spring. Now, why would I still put a turf spring in there if I have a spring compressor? Well, the reason is really simple. Um, Turf springs have less of a chance of a set, and even if they do set, they set less than the stock springs, which are really just stock music-wise. These, uh, the springs that Turf makes have a little bit better um, heat treatment to it, so they tend to they tend to hold up a little better with free compression spacers, and with uh, the red springs hold up better and so what so forth. You're gonna get a little bit of compression to it. That you're gonna get a little bit of a set to it. That's that's okay. But the ones that come with Nerf Blasters, they just take a total set, yeah. Also, they're a little more powerful, you know. You can hear that right right there. I kept the AR in, as you can see. If I take the AR out, I end up with all that dead space, and it doesn't really work. Um, I did take the pegs out, you know. So, yeah. So I'm not saying they're terrible Blasters, because they're not. I'm actually getting a pair of Sweet Revenges. I, I like the lines of the Rebel line better. Um... And I am actually considering either putting these on back holsters or putting these on leg holsters or something. Going with kind of a, a six-gun rig uh, for my backups. Two Kronoses, um, a Pigeon, a Mauser Fire, and maybe two of these. That's what I'm thinking. So peace out.